So today we're going to do some digital inking. Now, this term can mean a whole bunch of different techniques. There is no one way to digitally ink your pencils once you've scanned them into your computer, or if you did what I did here and just draw them as pencils in the computer. Um, you know, when, when people first started using uh, Photoshop for quote-unquote digital inking techniques, what they were doing was taking their pencils and using things like adjust levels to kind of darken things up. So if their pencils were clean enough, and these pencils are not clean enough, I just kind of threw this down nice and quickly for this demonstration. But if your pencils were clean enough, um, you, could, you could use different layer settings to kind of make your your pencils clean enough so that they could be um, used as inks and it would look like you know you hired an inker to do the thing so that way you know pencilers could keep the fee for both the inker and the penciler um, and you can't sometimes if, if your pencils are clean enough you can't really tell the difference between um, a quote-unquote leveled penciled page versus an actually inked page um, so that's that's one digital inking technique. We're not going to do that today. We're gonna we are going to basically redraw what we drew here. So essentially, what I'm going to demonstrate is inking, but I'm just going to be using the the Photoshop because it's easier for me to demonstrate, and I don't have to set a uh, overhead camera and and a brush and all that kind of stuff. So most of the techniques that I'm demonstrating to do today can be used with a regular pen or brush or on a piece of paper. This just happens to be digital because of the nature of the demonstration. Um, the, so there are, there are a number of different ways you can ink a piece. Um, if you're going for a, a more animated style, then your line width is probably going to be uniform throughout the piece. So uh, for example, if I did like a, a cute face here, all the lines are the same width, uh, which makes it easier to animate. Um, the animators don't have to worry about changing line widths and stuff like that. They can just go in and ink. Um, and in, in this method, the lines represent the outlines of an object. So, um, you know, the, every, every line is the same width because you'll see the, the object in motion. So this kind of inking style defines the border of an object. Uh, the other way you can ink is sort of treating the line as part of the object itself. So that's a little bit difficult to explain. So let's say I do um, like a, a, a skull kind of situation here. Um, so this this black, this dark black here um, isn't just the border of the, the skull, it, it represents the shadow. Um, so it becomes, the inking becomes part of the piece itself, the object itself. Um, and you see the same thing with like these cracks. They're not just defining parts of the skull. They are actual cracks in the the in the object. So um, those are two different approaches for inking. Um, whoops. Uh, what we're going to do is sort of a hybrid of both of them. We're going to be using lines to define the borders of objects, but we're also going to use the thickness of a line to sort of give weight to certain parts of uh, of the object. So instead of, you know, drawing a, let's just draw like a tube there with the same width, we're gonna, on the bottom edge, probably give it a little bit more weight. So it's somewhere in between the two. That's the type of inking technique that I am going to be demonstrating to you today. Uh, I'm using Photoshop. I dislike Photoshop for inking a lot, um, but I'm using Photoshop because it's, like the most popular digital art tool and this is just to give you guys an example of what what I use in my workflow um, let's see here normally when I ink I, I use manga studio because I feel like the inking tools are a little bit better um, the brushes feel a little bit more natural and um, I'm able to get results that I like that are closer to what I do when I'm using an actual brush but for demonstration purposes I'm using Photoshop just because I know Photoshop more than I know Manga Studio, so if you have any questions, I can answer them more readily with uh, Photoshop. But this, these techniques work pretty much with any product or, um, you know, like I said, real brushes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's just hop into it. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to 
change the color of the line weight, the line art to a blue, um, just because it will help me see my inks. I'll be inking in black, so it'll help me see my inks over my pencils a little bit better if I use blue as a color. So what I've done is I've filled a layer above my pencils with just a, a light blue shade, and I'm going to set the um, set the layer um, what is this the the layer setting to color. Um, you could do multiply, but that turns the entire thing blue. You could do color burn, stuff like that, darken, um, but color works because it changes everything that's. Um, dark in the layer below it into a color and then I'm going to um, take it down just a little bit opacity uh, and then I'm just gonna put this into a group called sketch uh, sketches and do that do that uh, and then we'll create another group called inky stinky and a layer in there all right, so um, the brush I am going to be using is the default hard brush here. Um, I don't recommend this because it's it's not the best. It, it's kind of jittery, um, but I don't have time to fiddle with brush settings and all that. Um, there are people out there who are who spend a lot of time developing brush presets. Uh, one of my favorite is Frendin. Um, he offers a number of presets uh, that you can buy from him. Uh, I like using his Inker nib. Um, but for this in, this purpose, I'm going to just give you the default action uh, just to make it easier because, you know, I could do an entire video on brush presets and that it's just, it's not something I'm very good at. Uh, other things to note, I am working at print resolution. So the canvas size is... 3,000 by 3,000 pixels, or 5 inches by 5 inches at 600 dpi. I find that if I work bigger, um, even bigger than I intend to print when I reduce everything, it, it gets rid of all the mistakes and it makes everything look a little bit more sharp. Um, so work as big as you feel comfortable, uh, and then go from it through there. Um, so when I ink in, in, in real life, I use a number 3 brush, which is slightly big but it um, gives me a lot of options in terms of uh, line width so if I want to draw really thin lines I hold the brush lightly if I want thicker lines I can get in and, and push down harder uh, with digital inking I, I tend to change the brush size a lot as I'm going through uh, for different reasons so if I'm doing an outline I'll use a thicker um, brush if I'm if I'm doing like detailing stuff I'll, I'll tone it down a little bit so um, so enough talking, let me just get into it. Uh, normally if I'm drawing a face or if I'm inking a face, I'll work on, I'll, I'll do the nose first. Um, I'll ink the nose first. In this case, I'm going to do the eyes. It's uh, just personal preference. Um, when you're inking a page in real life, you want to, if you're right-handed, you kind of want to move from the top left to the bottom right because the ink dries and you won't get your hand smudged over it. Uh, if you're left-handed, you want to go the opposite way. So you would work from the top right to the to the bottom left. Um, and there's, you know, it's it's essentially glorified tracing. You know, there's that scene in Mallrats where um, they, they go to the inker and they say, you're a tracer! No, I use line width to define depth and and uh, depth and all that kind of stuff, which is true. Which is what I feel like inking does personally. Um, but yeah. oh, uh, you won't see me switching tools very much. You'll just see all of a sudden the the, the brush turns into an eraser. Uh, that's the hotkey. So if you hit E on your keyboard, it turns your brush into a uh, uh, an eraser and if you let go it'll pop it right back to the brush tool so that's a quick hotkey for you um, also the spacebar is your hand tool so it lets you move the canvas around and um, so this is a monster cutie I wanted to do a little bit more of an intricate thing instead of just a, a blobby cutie so that's why um, this cutie is embedded in this monster skull thing. 
Um, and the, the loose story is that um, when these cuties are confronted by a predator or something they're afraid of, um, they can summon these demons to help them. So that's why um, some some of these cuties look really really cute in their faces, but have like crazy crap going on around them. So, and you'll see things disappear. That's just me hitting undo. Um, the nice thing about doing this digitally is that you can flub up and and undo things. The danger is that you get used to that and um, you spend a lot of time trying to get your lines absolutely perfect. Uh, and they don't need to be. They just need to translate what you're doing. And honestly, the only person who's going to know that you've drawn something incorrectly is you. So if you think it works, it works. All right, so um, my general philosophy for doing this is to use thicker lines to define the outline of a shape um, and then go in with thinner ones to kind of break up the forms for detail. Um, anytime I do a, a, a rounded shape I try to give a little bit more thickness towards the, the bulbous end. And then go through. So you can see my pencils are pretty loose. Uh, this is generally the way I work. So um, a lot of the de this lets me get into the fiddly bits and the details as I'm inking. So um, it gives me a lot of room to interpret things and just come up with interesting shapes that I find um, work for what I'm working at. Uh, every once in a while I'll zoom out just to see how, f how I'm doing. Another thing you can do in Photoshop, um, uh, if you go to Windows, you can go to Workspace. Uh, let's see, nope, yeah, you go to Arrange and you can get a new window. And then, um, let's see, this. So, so I'm at full zoom, let's see if I hit the F key. So what that does is it creates a new window for your piece, so you can zoom that out if you want. And then work um, as zoomed in as you want on this bigger piece so that you can see um, when you make a line it'll show up here and then you can compare. I've actually got a dual monitor set up so I'm working on my Cintiq right now so on the, the main screen I have a smaller window open. Um, you can't see that because it's I can only capture one screen at a time um, but yeah that's that's the way I like to work. When, uh, when I'm inking in, in on paper um, sometimes I'll step back away from the page just to see how things are going. But yeah, in general I like I like to start with the eyes. There's a lot of personality in the eyes. Um, and that's where a lot of the the characterization comes in from. So but yes. Uh, I another thing I like to do is turn the page when I'm working. Um, for a long time Photoshop lacked this functionality, uh, so up until I think CS5, which is what I'm using now, um, I, n I never used Photoshop to ink stuff because I couldn't turn the page. Um, but now that CS5 has implemented the, the rotate feature, I use this all the time. So to rotate, you just hold down the R key, and then you go to town. If you want it to snap back to the original position, um, hit the shift at the same time and it'll snap into various degrees. And then you let go and you're back to your inking. So, uh, Manga Studio also lets you rotate the page the same way. So that's another reason why I like Manga Studio because it lets me rotate my page and, um, and ink the way I like to ink. Uh, Sketchbook Pro also allows you to do that. So those are some really great programs that I like to use. Sketchbook Pro, Manga Studio, and then Photoshop. Photoshop is kind of like the all-around workhorse. If I need to do something quickly, or if I need to do something where I know the client is going to ask for a lot of edits and changes, then I'll, then I'll work strictly in Photoshop. If it's for myself, 
where I know I'm the only one who is going to ask for edits or changes, then I'll be working in um, Manga Studio. Because I kind of, once I put a line down, I kind of like, if it doesn't look right, I'll just keep it, you know? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not as, as particular with my stuff. Um, I'm just trying to get it done, you know? <laughs> All right, so um, you can see I spend a lot of time on the eyes, carving in details, uh, using blacks as as um, shadow to kind of sink in objects. Um, and this is just practice and a feel for things. You get an idea of what you're going for as you're going along. And my pencils are so loose that I can just spend a lot of time defining things. Now, if you want to clean up areas, you can go back to your pencil layer. Um, what I like to do is create a new layer above that. And since everything is blue now, if I want to define something better, let's see, I want to use a gray. Um, it looks like I'm drawing in blue. so. Kind of works out that way. Um, I'm just kind of trying to define these areas a little bit better. Symmetry is kind of important, but not really, because this is a random creature. Um, and it's at an angle, so I can cheat a lot of things. To get to these cracky, veiny things, I'm just kind of very loosely dragging my stylus across the, the screen to get it done. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm just going to keep going, plugging away at this, but if you want to fast forward to the end to see what this looks like, I do not mind. <laughs> um, I guess I should, uh, if I do more of these tutorials, like have a Q&A session. So like if I'm doing something long, like a inking demo, um, I can answer, I can answer viewer questions. All right. Uh, sometimes every once in a while, I like to turn off the sketch just to see how things are going. Oops. And, uh, zoom out and see what's there to see. Um, I don't like what's going on in this nose, so I'm going to erase some of that. Um, eyes seem a little bit small to me, but I'm going to break that up with more fiddly bits here. So I'll just keep with it. That's interesting. Um, so uh, this type of loose pencils works great if you're drawing monsters if you're if you're doing something like a like a, a specific character with a uniform or clothing you might want to be a little bit more precise with your pencils um, but for some a demon like this something like this gives you a lot of room to just play around since as long as you hit the the major forms you can just start dragging in lines wherever you want so um, as long as the base forms are are, are, are well-defined, like the brow section should be well-defined, and then the, the nose section should be pretty well-defined. You want those forms to really speak at a glance. 
Um, but some of this other fiddly bits, you know, you can just kind of play around with it. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is uh, the more lines you put in an area, the more it, it becomes kind of like a pattern and the more it recedes into the, the background. So um, this section here that I just did that looks sort of like muscle sinew, uh, that's intentional because I want these eye sections to appear sunken in. So um, when you draw lines like this, it, it becomes a pattern and that pattern sort of blends it in with the, the dark blacks, the spot blacks. Um, I could cheat and keep that area open for the colorist, which would be me, and then um, use some darker tones to, to really indicate that those areas are sunken in. But I feel like I feel like good inking, um, if, if you define these areas, if you define the shapes, if you define the forms with some good inking, then it makes the colorist's job much more easier, and then it just makes the colors pop, like the colors become an enhancement rather than a fix. So um, my, my philosophy is always start with good inks, and then the, the colorist's job is much more easy. Um, having been both an inker and a, and a colorist, you know, that's kind of my thought. Good inks. Now, good coloring can save a bad inking job. Um, and I've had to do that on a few projects in the past. But I always prefer working with good inks. So if, the, if your inking is looking great, your colors are going to be awesome. If your inking is looking mediocre, your colors can still be awesome, but it's not going to be as strong as if, you know, all the pieces were working together. So <laughs> that's also why I tend to work on my own stuff. I prefer working on my own stuff start to finish. Um, inks, uh, pencils, inks, and, and so forth, and colors. Um, because I'm a control freak. Um, but I also know what I'm leaving out and what I'm putting in. It's starting to come together. so dramatic. Filling this in with dark black. So dramatic. Um, but don't be afraid to have fun with what you're doing. Like, you know, there are, there are no rules to this stuff. If it looks good, it is good. If it looks like crap, it's probably crap. Just come up with your own workflows. Come up with your own philosophy for inks. Uh, general rule of thumb is that um, your eye is attracted to, to big black areas. So you can sort of use that to bring focus to certain points in your composition. Um, right now I'm kind of using blacks to sort of define shadows and sunken in areas and the edges of stuff. And also to create some texture. Inking is great for establishing texture. So is Photoshop, but like the difference between a photo texture and, and something that you inked in the piece um, I, I prefer using inks to define a lot of that stuff.
Oops. So I kind of do everything all at once. Uh, some people like to establish all the outlines before they go back in and, and do the detail work. I kind of do everything all at the same time. Um, and I hop around to different parts of the composition. I, I don't get bogged. Well, I, I usually start with the face or a point of interest. Um, but in general, I, I kind of hop around the page a lot. It's a little bit different when you're inking with a brush um, on a piece of paper. Like I said, I, I like to go from top left to bottom right in my composition. And then I then I spend a lot of, I, I leave a lot of time at the end to do all the detail work and I'll use um, brushes or tech pens or um, repeatographs, um, various sizes to kind of do some of the more detail work that I'm doing here, like all these veins and stuff. Um, but if I'm doing it in the computer, I'll just go to town like, Spend a little time on one area, move to the next. Spend a little time on one area, move to the next. Um, it's a little bit more uh, flexible, I guess, because uh, I don't have to worry about drying times and smudges. Um, I, I personally prefer using pen and ink and uh, actual physical media. But for um, speed sake and, and for corrections and stuff like that, um, I work digitally just because I don't have to wait for drying times. I don't have to worry about smudging. Um, I don't have to worry about like knocking over my bottle of ink. <laughs> Tell them in the zone because I'm not saying anything. <laughs> uh, oh, I should save. Save. Uh, yes, save often because um, unlike paper, if you don't save and your computer crashes, you could lose everything. If you don't save when you're working on a piece of paper and you walk up and get to the bathroom and the power goes out, uh, you still have your piece of paper and you can ink by candlelight. Um, so you don't have to worry about surge protecting your uh, <laughs> your drafting table. <laughs> um, but save often, save often. You you should have the, the save hot keys memorized. Um, if you have a Wacom tablet, you should have uh, the save hot keys set up on one of your um, your hotkeys, you can just press the button and not think about it. Just press the button and save. Press the button and save. Save. ABS. Always be saving. Um, so, there are uh, a few inkers you should always look for, look to for inspiration. At least I look to for inspiration. Uh, one is Jeff Smith of 
bone fame. Um, he his inking is it's absolutely gorgeous. His stuff is amazing. Um, bone is is a masterpiece of storytelling anyway. But like um, his inks are great. The way they define shapes, the way they define forms, um, the way they flow, the way they communicate motion. I mean, just Jeff Smith is like the epitome of, of cartoon inking. Like he's, he's the master. So you should definitely, um, look out for his stuff. Uh, Mike Mignola, Hellboy. Um, he's a favorite of mine. He definitely uses blacks to define, um, shadows and, and textures and things like that. I love his stuff. Um, those two really inspire what I do with my inks, uh, or <laughs> what I try to do with my inks. Um, yeah, those two are amazing. Um, I, I just pour through their stuff. Um, there we go. We got some action there. Let's, def let's get to... There we go. Come on. Let's step outside here. Uh, those two are my favorite inkers. Uh, I collect their stuff voraciously. Um, it's also great now that the internet has so many great things, so you can look up references if you don't feel like going to the comic shop um, and, and take a look at their stuff. Uh, another person I like to um, study their inking techniques is Frank Cho. Um, he does a lot of interesting things. He uses mostly microns, which are tech pens, um, felt tip, tech, I, I, I don't know. They're not tech pens. I guess they're called liner pens or something like that because technical pen is like a repeatograph or something like that. Um, but he gets a lot of uh, line variation and depth with just those um, microns. Um, they are terrible pens, let me tell you. They do not last long at all. Um, but he does a lot of great stuff with them. He also does a lot of ballpoint pen work um, with cross hashing. Um, so he's a good inspiration for just uh, playing around with different different materials. Um, but you know, Mignola and Jeff Smith, those are my two. And then Frank Frank Cho, just just to see what he's up to. Um, and then, uh, Urasawa, oh god, I don't remember his first name, but the, the mangaka who did Monster and 20th Century Boys, um, his stuff is awesome. I love, I love looking at his inks. Uh, a lot of manga artists do a lot of interesting stuff with their inking. Um, they use a lot of, um, nibs, uh, like the, uh, they, they kind of look like fountain pens dipping nibs um, and so they use various nibs of various weights and sizes um, those guys do some interesting stuff but Urasawa is one of my favorite mangaka like what he's able to do with his line work is just phenomenal so those are my inking recommendations for people to find draw inspiration from Get it? Draw inspiration from. Yeah, that's terrible. It's a bad sign when the puns come out.
I don't race too much, um, but sometimes I do. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull out something here. Big neck muscles, all the muscles. Uh, so I don't really want to draw too much attention to the neck area, so that's why it, it lacks a lot of detail. Um, most of my focus, most of the focus I want, most of the area that I want people to focus on is happening like right in here. Um, so that's where a lot of the lines are because people's eyes are drawn to lines. Uh, right now I'm using parallel hatching so a lot of parallel lines to kind of define areas of creases and things like that shadows and stuff um, it's just one technique you don't have to use it <laughs> but I think it fits with the the look and the feel of this this creature um, also using a lot of dirt so just some random scratches here and there just to break up these large vast areas of um, white so there's some some dust particles and dents um, there are brushes that do this there's a, a nice spatter brush in manga studio um, that looks like it's um, airbrush spatter or like if you took a a spray can, like a spray paint can, and, and shook it out when it was dying, and then use that to kind of texturize your paper. So there's some there's some brushes that you can play around with that, but um, for the most part, I like to kind of do this dirt and grit by hand because it looks more intentional. Like I meant to do that instead of just hey, this is. A, uh, an algorithm that's kind of doing it for me. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's a good stopping point. Uh, I lied. I'm going back in to define this edge a little bit more, give it a little bit more weight. All right, much better. Okay, now this is a good stopping point. Um, so, so yeah, if you have any questions about digital inking or inking in general, um, feel free to drop me a question wherever you find this video uh, in the comment section. Um, and I will hopefully be back next week or the week after that with uh, some more artsy, fartsy tutorials and stuff like that. All right, thanks for checking me out. Uh, I'll check you later, bye. I hope that was helpful for you in terms of digital inking or just inking in general. And if you want to check out some of my other tutorials, they're over here on the right side. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates and random thoughts about comics and making comics and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so uh, I don't <laughs> know how to end these things. So I'm just going to ramble a little bit more so you can take a look at the thumbnails and click on them. All right. <laughs> See you later. Bye.